sort of gun nuts. I'm Nathan, and this is the Reloading Press. First thing I want to say is uh, to Willie Bullet Man, I know you're in the hospital, and they got good news today. I saw your update, uh, and that they're going to postpone surgery and, and, and do a little bit more antibiotics work. Congratulations on that. I hope everything goes well, uh, and that you're out of the uh, horse pistol as soon as possible, and able to get back with us. Guys, I was supposed to go to the range today. But the car had a coil pack failure, and I'm waiting for parts before I can get it fixed. It went $280 to change a coil pack in that car, which takes about 20 minutes. So I'm not really up for that. But I'm waiting for that to get the car fixed. I mean, I can drive it around. The EMS allows for me to drive it, but I don't want to take it in any unnecessary trips while the cylinder's missing. So... I'm not going to get to the range today. I'm probably going to go to the range tomorrow with Catherine. However, as you guys know, Saturday is usually very poor for filming. So I might not get it filmed. But what we're going to do on that day is shoot up a lot of the rounds that I already have for the 32 mag. And empty out some cases and get some base measurements. But I had to cast these up. I'm trying to get 300 bullets of each side, or of each type for load development with the 32. And I wanted to talk to you guys and ask you about load development techniques for handguns. There's several different methods load development for rifles. Satterly, uh, ladder load loading, and, and others. Round robin. But the problem with handguns are that you would have to shoot a considerable amount more ammunition to ensure that you're not having a sample size error. Not to mention the fact that if you're looking for horizontal distribution or horizontal spreading, that it may be so small that you don't notice it at 15 yards. So what I'm planning on doing is looking for velocity plateaus. So I find a good velocity plateau in conjunction with decent grouping and I'm going to know I'm around the point where things are working. In the past what I've done is I've done load development by experimentation and relying on experience. So I go to powders that have been successful in the past with bullets that I've had some success with and then I'd go, you know, 15%, whatever it is, below max. And then I'd work my way up until I found a load. And if I didn't find the load, then I would change a component, whether it be powder, uh, maybe bullet or something, depending on what my limiting factors were. That's not entirely the best way to do this because there's powders that are going to get ignored and that aren't going to get utilized that may have been right under a different circumstance. And that's what I think I'm going to try. What do you guys think? What kind of load development process do you think is best for doing handguns? Do you think that it's just, you know, kind of the shotgun method, try everything around what you got and see what sticks? Or do you think a more methodical pro approach is better? Personally, I want to try to mix the methodical with kind of the experience factor. I never want to throw out my experience. I've spent too long getting it. That's kind of the point of it. But I know you guys have tons of experience doing this stuff. Now some of the newer leaders, of course, you don't. But maybe you can see in this that even the experienced loaders sometimes, at least myself, get in the habit of doing things a certain way and sticking with it for, for years until we try something different. So I wanted to ask you guys that. I want to talk a little bit about the 32 project. We're just getting started. Like I said, I'm trying to load up or trying to cast about 300 bullets of each type. I had to take it apart the other day. The I had to take the river apart the other day. The loading gate was making contact with the transfer bar internally and causing a, a bit of a bad spot in the action. So I had to stone that a little bit. First time I've had that gun that far apart. Surprisingly, it wasn't that difficult. Just kind of made sure which way the pins go in. You know, the normal ordeal. 
I also fitted the holster a little bit better. So I used the, glove, the baseball glove conditioner and they had a Ziploc bag that I put the gun in and then I put it you know, in the holster and set it safe for a couple days. Seemed to work quite well. So I appreciate the feedback on that. I think we talked about that during the live stream. But guys, I think that's really about all I've got. I'm gonna keep working until I start getting some decent bullets out of this mold, but I appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys later. Till then, stay safe, have fun. I'll see you when I see you. Later.